you give me a sign, right? Good morning. Welcome to Easel Studio, your weekly hepatology broadcast, this time live from the ILC 2022 Easel's flagship annual meeting here in London. We call it London Cowling, and I'm quite happy that you are here. And I have very distinguished guest I will introduce in a minute. But first of all, I would like to introduce my co-moderator, it's Professor Manolis Tsochaches, and he is currently the chair of ESL Scientific Com um, uh, Committee. And so he's mainly responsible, really, for the programming of this year's event. So, welcome. Good morning, Manolis. Good morning, Thomas. You're uh, well? I'm well, I'm fine. I'm okay. delighted to be here in a live event after, after all this time. Uh, and uh, today we, we have the end of our uh, clinical and basic postgraduate course and then uh, the main scientific program starts uh, with, uh, with the general session. So I'm, I'm very excited about today. Excellent. So first of all, I would really like to introduce to you our special guests and experts and I would like to start with you, Catherine Dristel from UK and you're from the Queen Mary University Hospital in London. Hi. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for having me. And we have Dr. Ahmed El Shakawi also from the UK from the Unis University Hospital of Birmingham. Yep. So welcome to Thank you. you. Thank you so much. And I think you both are should I say notorious for being <laughs> excellent <laughs> social media experts in, in science dissemination and we will perhaps come later to that point. Okay. But now it's a, a really uh, special pleasure to, to introduce to you Professor Shiv Sharin from India and he is today also rep representing our sister society Apasal. So a big welcome to you, best wishes also to the Apasal community. I think quite unfortunately many of the people of the Asian Pacific region could not travel, right? So yes. could you tell us what the situation is in terms of travel in your countries and in Asia? Uh, thank you, Thomas, for first inviting me. And it's a great pleasure. The place is so well done. It looks like we are in a movie studio, you know, just recording. And so compliments to Easel from my personal self and also from the Apostle. Yes, in this large, very vital, important liver meeting, Many of my colleagues and friends could not make it, partly because of the pandemic and partly the visa mm. issues in uh, UK. I think it had been a huge rush to this country. Uh, of course, the meeting is to see you all and to feel uh, <laughs> is a different uh, thing than just on video. So greetings yeah. from Apostle from all over from Asia. Yes, thank you very much. And this is really th also the aim of our uh, morning studio session here, really to give all of you, you are connecting on your digital platform, that you get a sense what we are thinking here, what is interesting today in, in the program. And you can connect with us, there's a chat, or you can also ask questions if you go to the Easel event app and you will find it on the stu in the within the studio hub you find a button where you can ask your question so but first of all perhaps um, Schiff, what do you think what you're looking forward today what is for you the most interesting session well i was uh, intrigued by the postgraduate course and i did attend the basic science and the postgraduate course the basic science was amazing. It was close to what I thought will be future is neurohepatology. Uh, one of my PhD students, Adel, is working. Mm -hmm. And I realize how sensibly the program is futuristic, the basic science. Like I also enjoyed the yeah. prediction models for machine learning, which I you know, knew for our age. But it was very exciting to see what we do not know like MELD is only using three variables and you need like 100 variables to find out what will be the outcome. So going beyond three, five, ten variable models to 100,000 variable models and reproducing it was something which looks realistic. And uh, coming to Easel postgraduate course made me 
uh, at least get uh, rewired to see whether we can do it, and I think we can. I also enjoyed some of the sessions which are likely to come. Even the titles were exciting. For example, uh, sessions on gut microbiome, which is beyond uh, just the liver, so connecting gut, liver, and to the rest of the body, they were very exciting. I was also very happy to see some of the trials which are coming from our center as well as from others. Uh, you were asking me about rifaximine. Well, perhaps we can come later to this point. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, uh, Manolis, what do you think about the basic science and the postgraduate course? You were mainly involved also in discussion with the educational team, the basic science team. Well, uh, yeah. we, we tried really hard uh, to have uh, a basic uh, science course that uh, is uh, pitching to, to all different uh, levels and uh, we have paired uh, very experienced investigators with, uh, with their uh, postdoc uh, students uh, so that we can also, uh, they can also present research in uh, progress and what is uh, the cutting edge that is uh, happening in, in, in the biggest uh, biggest labs in, in Europe, and I, I think we have uh, a truly exciting uh, program. So, Catherine, um, what is what you are most looking for today? Is there any special session or any special presentation? Well, just like yesterday, it's a really packed program again yeah, today, and there are some times <laughs> where I want to be in two places at once and might end up having to watch things on catch-up later because it's all going to be on demand again. Um, but first thing this morning, uh, we're at 10 o'clock, there's a session about um, sort of digital media and, and a session on engaging patients through social media that I'm really keen to get to. And then my own clinical area is hepatitis C, and uh, although we're nearly there, well, we might not be nearly there, but we're getting there with elimination efforts. We're certainly not done yet with hepatitis C and the clinical and therapeutic abstract uh, are being presented at four o'clock this afternoon, so I will be there as well. Lots of other things going on in between times. Poster tours are opening, and then the day, I believe, is rounding off with the poster award ceremony, so it'd be great to go along and hear what the best of the best are. Yeah. Dr. El Shakavi, I think it's the first time that we have in a postgraduate course or in our International Liver Congress a topic related to science dissemination on social media, right? Or has yeah, yeah, as far as I, as I can remember, and I've been coming to ESOL, I was saying to Manola earlier, since 98 was my first ESOL as a medical student. But yeah. no, you're right. And I think it's really important to think about uh, that bi-directional conversation, I think, between physicians and patients, but patients and physicians as well. So it can't be just conversations in one direction. And, and certainly, I think, um, uh, there's, we, we previously had an easel studio which is on demand on, on, on the easel YouTube channel where we discussed this issue of the use of Twitter both for its professional education but also for interaction with the public and I think we need to do a lot more work in that field as physicians generally not just in hepatology to think mm -hmm. about the best use because everyone has a mobile phone now. Yeah. But you know there are also some critics that you can't really talk about science in just three or one line. So what would you answer these people? So you're right, and I'm not going to deny it, that you know, yeah. if you're going to look at detail, Twitter isn't ideal for detail, although some people write long threads, and there are apps that can unread the threads, so you can actually do generate longer discussions. I was, see, I was reading something on BBC News yesterday that Twitter is proposing something called Twitter Notes which will be longer pieces of 2,000 words. So there might be options in the platform, whether or not Elon Musk buys the, the companies, another discussion for another day, um, that might enable future things to be done. But I think it's interesting. I mean, the more I speak to people, those active on Twitter, I mean, I can't remember the last time I looked at a table of contents of a journal. Um, because actually I'm getting all the journals that I'm interested in through my Twitter feed with easy links to, to, to straight through to the abstract that I can read. And I can do that at any time at my convenience. So I'm doing CPD in, in not short bursts rather than having to necessarily carve out a time in my schedule to do it. So, Shiv, what do you think about it? Do you have a Twitter account, may I no. ask you? No, <laughs> not so far. Perhaps you no. have to. <laughs> well, uh, I think it's interesting and people would like to grow, as others are saying, with Twitter. Twitter. But I have a different perspective. What you do, you do well, dig deep. So uh, I think in Twitter and others, I feel it runs too fast. And you just go from one thought to the other. 
Uh, of course, the advantage is uh, that you get the PDFs very well and the material very fast. And also you are connected to people who are actually doing it, uh, the basic work. That to me, you know, you had to search for the lab and the person and the photograph and all that can come very well in one click. But I still feel that for science, we need to have a scientific Twitter rather than just have Twitter. That scientific Twitter, maybe easel, a puzzle, ASLD can develop, which is just beyond putting things, but beyond perspectives uh, should be an idea. I, I, I agree. I think Twitter is more about signposting. Mm. I think it's m about more about commentary. But you're right, there's nothing going to substitute going, digging out the journal article and reading it and critiquing it. Um, and if I may, Thomas, do a plug for Easel Journal Club. That's precisely what we're trying to do with Easel Journal Club, um, to try take something, to, to think about what's involved in critiquing a paper, yeah. having the authors there, having a challenger, and I, and I think it's, it, you're absolutely right. Yes. Uh, well. One other yep. big plus about Twitter, of course, is that it flattens the hierarchy. So as a young investigator, it's much easier to like approach somebody that you might not feel that you can make a, a formal approach or even have access to yeah. in your own country, your own field, another country. So it really does bring people closer together to allow them to discuss the work that they're doing, give you a chance to promote the work that you're doing yourself. So I'd encourage anybody who's watching who hasn't already got a Twitter account to get, get one. Uh, it's very easy to sign yourself up with your email address and then the hashtag for the event is hashtag ILC in capitals 2022 and you can find all the stuff that's going on from e ILC and Easel's conference via that hashtag. Yeah, um, excellent discussion. We're coming back to the, the program of today. So Manolis. Well, we, yeah. have, we have the general session that uh, kickstarts the meeting and uh, it is uh, the selection of, uh, of the best uh, abstracts. Uh, so I, I was wondering, did you have a chance to, to look at the program? Do you have any favorites? Any, anyone you are... Uh, yeah, keen so at uh, listening to? I'm really looking forward to seeing the bulviratide data, which is the last abstract in the general session. Uh, so we all know hepatitis delta therapy is being revolutionized. There's still other agents to come. So this is the result of the phase three? The phase three. Right. So it's a, and it's this is the 48 week result of the phase three that Heiner Weidmeier is presenting. Okay. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So I'm looking forward to seeing that because there are lots of unanswered questions in Delta. For example, how long do you treat for? Um, is viral suppression enough? Is ALT normalization necessary? I mean, we, we could spend a whole studio. Well, we have. There have been easel studios on Delta in the recent past, but I'm really looking forward to seeing the actual results in the data. And, and Shiv, you mentioned before Rifaximin A, which there, there is a double-blind uh, placebo-controlled trial on the antifibrotic effect in yeah. early alcohol-related liver disease. Do, do yes. you think there is any...? Uh, I think it has a merit in it. Uh, we tried uh, Rifaximin along with uh, pentoxifilin for hepatopulmonary syndrome and the combination was far superior than giving pentoxifilin, which is our first line drug for hepatopulmonary. And this was not published, but was an oral at ASLD. And I realize now, similarly, as an antifibrotic. So I think rifaximin may play a role, uh, both not only for liver, but also for lung, because of the change in the, you know, uh, the bacterial profile. So I think it has a role. I also would like to uh, tell you a very interesting part of the morning sessions that we attended. There is a huge divide between American and the Bevino or the Easel in the areas where you have 5, 10, 15, 20 as the marker of fibrosis and defining portal hypertension. But I realize and I think that is an interesting part of this meeting is the conflicts and the emerging thoughts after Bevino 7 and whatever is not left. So I, say, I see several papers which are dealing with the limitations and one of them was whether in decompensation jaundice should be a part of it or should not be a part of it. And I see uh, uh, D. Amico and others and I wish all of you who are listening to look into this point with your own perspective, decompensation, is, is it just bleeding, ascites, etchy? And should jaundice not be a part or should be a part of it? And I think this controversy will rage for a few years for us. Uh, I think uh, Easel provides us an opportunity of making large international trials. And uh, I must compliment Thomas you and Manalis you for taking this. 
So it's a great opportunity for me to learn and I look forward to the day. And alcoholic liver disease uh, in India at least is now 40 to 45 percent of all liver disease. It's becoming like crazy waste of alcohol. Mm. So we, and we have no solutions for that except maybe FMT or some of these. So that's where we are. Yeah. And I think there's also a very interesting a phase three study result showing for Wilson disease, so right, yes. Manolis? And yes. we are just um, yeah, commissioned a new guideline also on Wilson. Yes. Do you think it will impact the results? See also the, the guideline of a. We are, we are missing for a long time new treatments for Wilson. Or well, and I'm, yeah. I'm very much looking forward to, yeah. to the results. Um, the the uh, CPG will be ready probably in, in 16 months. So, uh, well, it, it very much depends on the results and if it will be approved by the regulators until then. Uh, so we will see if it will influence the, yeah. the guidelines. Okay, I think we are nearly coming to the, to the end. I haven't seen um, so far no question here from our digital audience. Catherine, is there anything you want to add? Just to say, I think the breadth of what's on offer today at ILC 2022 is huge. And even in one session, like the general, po or the, the general abstracts, you can get such a lot of breadth of, of liver disease just by coming to this meeting. It's a really great opportunity for anybody at any stage in their career. I think in whatever field in hepatology you're interested, you will find the Definitely. topic during the general session. Um, so we really would like to um, invite you to, to join this session. And it's now my pleasure really to, to thank you all for, for a wonderful discussion. I want to give you a brief update what is coming um, today in terms of studio sessions. So we have a special round table um, industry roundtable session today um, in our lunchtime talk and this will be 11.30 BST and here we called it um, it's around HBV and HDV cure where do we stand and where are we going in HBV, HDV um, drug development and where is the roadmap um, to cure we have excellent experts and it's chaired and the moderators are Sabella Lenz from Spain and Pietro Lampertico from Milan, Italy. And we have as expert um, Professor Mala Maini here from the UK, London. And we have representations from our industry partners, from the R&D development um, departments, from Arbiters, from GSK and from Gilead. So don't miss this session and the wrap up session will be in the tea time this um, afternoon um, so where we discuss with expert what was presented more in detail and what it means for our clinical practice. So I wish you an uh, ongoing nice experience with ILC 2022 and many thanks to the experts, co-moderator Manolis and goodbye. Thank you. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye -bye. Bye -bye.